Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. And as I promised you guys, I made several promises and I even posted them for you so that you could see what's coming up this year in 2023 for projects, just some fun miscellaneous stuff, um, collections management, antiques, vintage oddities, you know, knowledge that will be shared, identifications, values, histories, etc. As well as projects um, such as this junk journal that I'm working on. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys, and it might be sort of a series because there's definitely going to be multiple videos as I put this together, is in my mind how I think and how I sort of formulate how I personally create junk journals. Now, my methods are very unorthodox in some cases, and many, many people, I'm telling, I mean like thousands of people have left beautiful, amazing, inspiring comments about the uniqueness and they actually have gone back and used some of my ideas in their own junk journals. And when I make junk journals, just like most people, they consist of various parts. They consist of things that on a regular basis I am making and putting together, um, such as the things in this box are all pieces and parts Everything from tags to accordion, different type of accordion things. I'm known for making pop-ups, so I will actually pre-make some of my pop-ups. Um, of course, we have the 4,000 ways to use um, junk mail envelopes, pieces of cardboard that I have formed into different little treasures as well as belly bands. I mean, the list goes on and on, you guys can imagine. Plus, there are things that are simply of my own creation. And as you know, I also collect buttons, bits, and bobs. So those actually go into my creations as well. And with that, you know, besides just adding them to the project. I try to do, you know, different things with them to give them more dimension and to give them more interest. And of course, I'm always for something that's interactive. And so you will see those in my junk journal or any junk journals that I make as well. So in my process, what I um, do is I will put together, you know, I go through my inventory first and I put together a collection of things that I want to use in that particular journal. So this journal is going to concentrate on advertising. So vintage advertising mixed in with some modern day advertising. Now what makes my journal different is most people, they purchase things um, that are already pre-printed or they print things themselves and that's what they use and they do, of course, cut them out, they colorize them, you know, they might even add a little bit of something else to them just to give them a little more dimension. But I like to find my items out in the wild. We are known for antiques, collectibles, and oddities. Not really collectibles as much as vintage things, I would say, and oddities. So I do look through the ephemera that we receive and pull out anything that I think I would like to use in a project and something else to know, and this may be sacrilege for some, is yes, I will deconstruct antique items, vintage items, if I know I'm going to use them in a project. Now, if these items have super high value, obviously, we're not going to damage or destroy those items, but other items that do have some damage, or let's say that the item will sell for 10 or $20 or less, I don't mind using those in my projects because I know they're going to get good usage, respectable usage. 
I will use multiple pieces of said items over multiple projects. And as you guys know, um, and you can look down in the description of this video, just look through everything and you'll see that I actually send out packets of these items to people who are subscribers, supporters of this channel and just give them to them for free. You don't have to do anything but be a subscriber and send a self-addressed stamped envelope so that I can pack it for you and ship the stuff out. And we have done that dozens upon dozens upon dozens upon dozens of times. And it is so much fun to do that. So, you know, I, because I know there, and I've had the, it's not often, maybe three, four comments over time through Facebook um, and I think it was mostly on Facebook and some of the Facebook groups where people are like, oh, I wouldn't have torn that apart or, oh, you know, that's like ephemera. The thing is, I, I also don't like having tons and tons of stuff. So it's better to use the stuff and turn it over. And then, like I said, the very special pieces, the ones that have higher value, obviously do not damage those. And I don't damage those. So... This is my first iteration of this particular cover that I'm thinking about. So what I will do is I will put the cover together like this. Nothing is glued down. Nothing is um, bratted or anything. I just sort of lay it down. Even the corners are just sitting here loosely. They're not um, clasped on or anything like that. And I will actually take a couple pictures, actual photographs, and look at them and see which cover I like the most. That does a couple things. One thing it does is if you like this cover with a photograph, sort of like a puzzle, you will remember where you had all of your bits, bobs, pieces, ephemera, etc. The other thing it does is I can compare if I like, and I have reformulated this like three times, and I can compare and figure out which cover I like the most, delete the photos of the um, covers that I do not like as much. And then I have that one thing to work off of. And it's fun. It's super fun doing that because you get to go back through your inventory and you get to check out what you had, remember things that you had. And you're also able to, you know, kind of go through it and weed out some things that might just be you know, don't belong in your particular collection. So it, and it also keeps your collection of ephemera bits and bobs very fresh in your mind. So I know that, you know, people will collect all these things, put them together, and then they forget what they have, or it's a chore to go through and figure out what you have. So I'll show you some of the things that I used um, in this cover. So what I have, and I'm actually, I found this Howard Johnson sign in my bits and bobs. And let me show you something that I have as well. Is I keep, I have several of these jars, which are giant, giant pickle jars that are just full of various bits and bobs. Um, I also have them sorted because I collect costume jewelry, real jewelry, as well as buttons. And I have a few other collections. So yes, in the future, there's some collection management videos coming. And so I do have um, pieces from those collections that are not the highest value or they have slight damage, etc. Or I just know that there are things that I would never, ever wear and they don't have, like I said, high value and I will use them in my projects. Um, that's, you know, one of the places, again, where some people are like, oh my God, that brooch. Yes, but the brooch has no back. Like the back of the brooch was completely broken off. It's not a precious or semi-precious metal. It's, you know, the stones are glued in. They're not claw set, so it's not worth really repairing. So I will use those types of items in my projects also. So an example of this is this watch that you see right here. 
I am thinking about whether or not I am going to add that to my design. So I just took it out and laid it there. And if I do, I probably will get rid of the strap so that it sort of just looks like a clock that's in place. So this is kind of what I do for my initial setup. So some, and the other thing I do is as I'm looking through things, you will see there's some little piles here. I start pulling out things that I will use or think I will use in the overall pages of the junk journal. So, and I sort them usually by size. So this I consider to be like medium, small, extra small items. And then in here, what I have are some of the little miscellaneous bits and bobs that I would use. And over here, I have some tags that are commercial tags or not anything that I made and other bits and bobs and teeny tiny bits of um, ephemeral things are in there. So that's usually like my initial thing of going through things. And then, yes, I have this giant box of different ephemeral, ephemeral things that I have made over time that I will actually go through as well and pull out probably probably like four or five of these to use in the overall um, pages of the book. And you know me, I said this to you guys many times before, I consider the back pages of the book, the inside of the book, meaning the book boards. So the front of the book boards, back of the book boards, as well as the book board that is on the very, very back of the book, the last page, if you will to also be worthy of design. So I look at sort of all of that, and this is the back book board for this one. And that is kind of my thought process for going through this. So this book concentrating on antique vintage and even some current day advertising, you know, I kind of have to keep all of that in mind as I'm picking out things for this project. Okay, so something else to know about on me is but for this project this is not going to happen but if I'm making a junk journal for joy as I call it then I really will use a variety of materials there is no theme other than usually on the court on the cover sometimes there is a theme um in regards to the book, like for example, if it's Halloween, obviously, or if it's a spooky one, or one that deals with poisons and potions, yes, there will be a theme to that. So this is just like one of the covers I created for this book, which, um, like I said, has a variety of different pages in it dedicated to different subjects. So it's up to you what you do. I know a lot of people create by theme, but believe me, you don't have to. And many, many times it's a lot more fun because you could be more free. You can fully engage your um, personality in it. I put the Mod Podge here. And the reason why is because I do something that is very bizarre that I don't know of other people doing this, but... I usually use used books to recover book covers as well as, of course, other ephemeral items for my project. So in doing that, um, these book covers do lose some of their strength. So what I will do is clean up the book cover. If you want me to show you a video on how I treat book covers, please simply leave a comment down below and I would love to show you that because it's one of the best but easiest things you can do to make your book cover super strong is you do have to clean them out really well and that doesn't mean just ripping out the pages that's like the easy part and you do have to do that carefully but also um, part of my process is using Mod Podge to bring strength back to the front and back of those book covers. So like I said, if you want to see a video on that, please let me know. So these book covers, the backs and the fronts, have been, um, I will say, treated 
so that they're ready to go for this project. So something else to know about this particular project is I took a shortcut. I've never done this before. Don't know how it's going to work out, but we will all learn together. And um, so going back to the whole book cover thing, usually, obviously, if I'm recovering book covers or using used books for the covers, then obviously I have to sew the things in, you know, the, the um, uh, I have to sew in the signatures. So when you sew in the signatures, it can be a pain. But I have, like I said, I will show you if you ask for it in that video um, about book covers, how I sew in my signatures. I came up with a super easy, quick, thank goodness method for doing it. And I know that because I, I want to say like recently I've seen like three comments in different groups where people, especially more beginner people are like, oh my God, how do you get these book covers? I'm sorry, these signatures in to the book covers because it is like they'll go through and complete and make everything. And then unfortunately their signatures will get ruined because of the attempts to sew them in or get them into the book covers. But here is a method that I am going to try out, which I think is very basic. I hope it works. I don't see why it really wouldn't. But what I did, because I am a member of a group that um, does reviews for Amazon, and we are allowed to pick from maybe 45, 50,000 items. Sometimes the number is a lot lower and we pay zero for these items except for um, some tax at the end of the year. And we, our job, I guess, if you'll call it that, as, is to go out and review these items 100% honestly. So I have several different things that I selected from the arts and crafts section and one of them was a book that you would put I guess your memories in and such and so it came with all of these pages pre-holed so all these holes were already in there the um, front and back covers as well everything was bound by a wire um, various wires actually and I used my pliers my snippers, I snipped them all out and ended up with, like I said, all of these pages and book boards with the holes in it. So what I decided to do for this particular journal is to use that for this journal for a couple of reasons. One, no sewing. I am going to be able to just, you know, I will probably use a leather needle because it's big and it's thick and I can put the thick twine through the holes easily but I will, you know, bind them together that way. Also, because of the binding method I'm going to use and the fact that all of this is, you know, has the holes pre-made, I can make the journal this thick or this thick. So the thickness is going to be wild. I am going to try to make it about probably this thick. So it's going to be a nice chunky one and you guys are going to be able to go on that adventure with me because as I create, you know, different portions of it, not the entire thing because that would take too long, but as I create different portions of it, I am going to show you how I'm doing that. So I guess we would consider this to be a how-to video. <laughs> so the first thing I did is, like I said, I clipped all the paid, um, metal brackets that were holding all these pages into the book covers apart. So everything was loose. Then what I did is using this corner cutter is I selected the corner I wanted, the style, and I simply put every single page in there and, you know, gave it a snip so that the corners are not just squared or rectangled off, but they are these rounded corners. The corners where the holes are, that is going to stay straight. That will stay straight. I thought about cutting those too, but I don't want to make the um, upper holes weak. So I decided against that. And so the other thing I did, as I said, I have a particular solution in a way 
that I prepare the book boards so that they're nice, tidy, and strong. So I went through and did that. My next thing was, like I said earlier, just laying things out, selecting things, which is always fun. It's like you're shopping in your own house for the things that I'm going to put on the page. So this is the first step or first steps. I guess there's a couple of them there, aren't there, in my process. So you guys, like, I do want you to tell me down in the comments, what do you do to prepare your projects? Like, do you go through the same processes that I go through? Is there something different that you do? Um, is anything I said here useful? Do you have any suggestions? Like I said, I'm always open to suggestions. So, you know, please let me know what you do. Thank you for tuning into this video. And please, you know, share your thoughts. I really want to hear them. And my next stages of this project will be to finalize the cover. And I will let you guys know, like, some of the things that I used on the cover because... I think it's important that you know that so that you know that you have better items than you can purchase out there that can go on your covers, go on your pages, and make something super extraordinary versus something that's just really good or nice. And because it's like authentic. That's the thing is the authentic authenticity of it all. So I do want to, once again, thank you guys for tuning in and remind you to please subscribe to the channel. It's always free and I'm always giving away free things. I redesigned my um, cards as well as a banner for the channel so that you guys will be seeing soon. And thank you for tuning in. A thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Be well and happy creating.